can think of wars. We can think of concerns about national security. In times like this, do we protect rights in the same way? In times like this, should we preserve, should we preserve our presumption of liberty? <coughs> Subject them to this kind of torture. In Omar's case, it's been eight years since he was 15. So during times of crisis, during the times of crisis, should the executive of a government have the authority to detain people without charge? So this question arose in what was known as the Liversidge case. Robert Liversidge was detained under a Regulation 18B order. Regulation 18B allows for the indefinite detention of someone whom the Crown has reasonable cause to believe either has hostile associations or is likely to harm public safety, public security. This is challenged before the House of Lords House of Lords says, you know what, you can challenge a Regulation 18B order, and this body can overturn a Regulation 18B order if the individual, the targeted individual, can prove one of two things. One, bad faith, Crown acted in bad faith, or two, mistaken identity. But you're not entitled to any information about your detention. So how do you demonstrate either bad faith or mistaken identity? Now this question also arose in the US. In the US, right around World War II, or in World War II, Japan declared war on <coughs> the Americans. So in 1942, the president of the US authorized the establishment of internment camps for Japanese Americans. The Japanese Americans were required to report to these camps. You have Fred Korematsu, who ignored the order. Eventually he was arrested, and he was convicted. And he was in breach of the order. Now the issue before the Supreme Court was whether or not the forced detention of a group of people merely because of their ethnic background was constitutional. So the Supreme Court held that this, their, their detention was constitutional, was valid, legitimate. In a decision that was a, a majority decision, six to three. What they said to justify it was military necessity. Military necessity justified their relocation. When you look at the dissenting judgment, they said that what this judgment did was in fact legalize racism. What it was also doing was permitting authoritarian rule. So states now have the authority to violate people's liberty merely by arguing national security. Again, we're not pointing to anything specific. We're merely saying that because of that person's ethnic background, they pose a threat. Now what's most interesting is that the US was also at war with Germany and was also at war with Italy. 
and yet they did not establish any internment camps for German Americans or for Italian Americans. What is the crisis that we're dealing with today? Terrorism. Terrorism is today's crisis. Australia, Britain, Canada, New Zealand, and the US have enacted <laughs> new anti-terrorism legislation over the course of the last few years. Now what this new legislation does is authorize what we refer to as preventative detention. Preventative detention. Now the thing about preventative detention is that we're not referring to prosecutions. What we need new laws for are to restrict people's freedoms, their liberties. Now the US anti-terrorism anti laws go a little bit further. They allow the US to designate individuals as enemy combatants, detain them indefinitely in secret sites, torture them, and as we saw just in recent days, assassinate them as well. So we're saying that there's a threat out there, a terrorist threat. Accordingly, what we need to do is curtail the liberties and freedoms that we once took for granted so as to promote order and security. Begs the question, what is terrorism? Now, there's a straightforward answer. Terrorism is the use of violence against civilians to achieve certain political ends. Bombing of World Trade Center. Planes were flown into buildings, killing two and a half thousand people. The aim, challenge American imperial supremacy. Political end, violence used against civilians. And we just know that NATO carried out this bombing campaign against Libya, resulting in several thousand civilian deaths to bring about the overthrow of Gaddafi. Regime change is a political end. Bombing of a country and killing of civilians is violence. So violence was used against civilians to achieve a political end. So you can go around the world and see there are many instances where violence is used against civilians to achieve political ends. As Edward Peck says, when I was the deputy director of the Reagan White House Task Force on Terrorism, President Reagan asked us to come up with a definition of terrorism that could be used throughout the government. We produced about six. In each and every case, they were rejected because careful reading would indicate that our own country had been involved in some of those activities. And so the terrorist, of course, is in the eye of the beholder. We have certain rights and freedoms that we guarantee. But we also have this need for order and security. As we said, some constraints are reasonable. But then the question is, how far can we go in curtailing these rights? And should we preserve these rights during times of crisis? Now, there's a case that can be made for the violation of rights. In times of crisis, there may not be enough time to pursue someone through the normal channels. It takes months before an issue can go before judges. There is, of course, a case that can be made for the protection of rights. As we said, the purpose of human rights is to protect people from arbitrary state power. During times of crisis, governments are more likely to abuse that power. When we're faced with legislation that reduces people's rights, there are important questions that we need to ask before authorizing the legislation. Is the liberty reducing measure genuinely going to enhance security? Second question, does the need for security outweigh the need for liberty? The third question, Whose rights are we giving up? So, Oklahoma City bombing. Everyone remember that one? Right, Oklahoma City bombing. Buildings were attacked, boom, explosion. Right, they come down immediately at 15 airports across the US. People of 
Arab, Muslim background, detained. Name of the person responsible? Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. Timothy McVeigh. After the World Trade Center went down, we said, you know what? We have to appreciate that Muslims, Arabs, pose a threat. And they were required, I remember I was living in the US at the time, required to go down to the FBI office and register. You're required to register because you pose a threat. After the Oklahoma City bombing, I didn't hear anyone saying, hey, you know what? We should be careful about those white people. Males, veterans, Christian beliefs, dangerous ones. <laughs> so the question ends up being, whose rights are you surrendering? Because it's always very easy to surrender rights when you're surrendering someone else's versus surrendering your own. 